Hi, in this slide, we're going to look at uh, some more traditional um, job quantity quality throughput numbers. Uh, I think that if you look at any job, particularly in a process business like distribution, where you have a, it's a pipe and, and inventory just flows from manufacturers uh, to and through a distributor to customers. So how much th throughput can we have for the fewest number of bodies in the, in the, in the pipe as a form of, of efficiency and effectiveness? Uh, so at any given job, we might say, you know, what are four to eight numbers that uh, surround this? So let me get my pen here surround this job. Uh, certainly there's volume throughput of an activity. Uh, was it done on time? Was it done correctly the first time? Accuracy, quality, the output. Uh, but this doesn't, you know, some people can have great volume throughput, but it's because of things upstream or downstream that make them so productive. You know, there are a lot of people saying, I'd like to do more, but, you know, we don't have any sales coming in today, so I, my numbers are, are anemic. So we we have to look at the, at the total process and look at upstream, downstream uh, team members and what they're doing. As far as timeliness, I can't get it on time if the guy upstream gives it to me, you know, you know, after time and expects me to make it up. So we have to look at a process that cuts through different departments and look at the, at the integrity uh, and design of the process itself. Um, if you go to my website uh, and click on exhibits, uh, I think it's exhibit five. I should have done the research on this before, but I think it, it, it's entitled uh, service processes times, uh, you know, or, or, or services times process engineering. So we have to go back and look at that and make sure that our, our, our processes are as simple as possible, user friendly as possible, robust and flexible as possible. Uh, and then as we look at the process, then we start to look at the people inside and say, for that process, how do we define skill, skills that are necessary to be very good in that process context? If, if you're at McDonald's and you're doing French fries and, and burgers, um, what you need to do that very well is, is, is very tuned by the overall process and the product that's going on there. You can't take that person and put them in another restaurant and expect them to be functional or, or have high skill mastery. Um, it's, it's a different context. Um, overall vers versatility is important because we'll have surges. All of a sudden it's like a, like a, we have a, the service process is like a boa constrictor and all of a sudden a sheep or a small cow wants to, it was, doesn't want to go through, but the boa constrictor consumes it. And so it's a big bulge that has to go through the constrictor in a sense. So how do we have people downstream and upstream and offstream hop on the bulge and ride it through to take sure, make sure it happens on a timely basis, perfectly done and so forth. Um, the, uh, when it comes to the heroic recoveries, it's one thing to do the, the fast cure with icing on it, but it's another thing to learn the lesson and then go back and rethink the systems uh, to, 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 to do that very well. Um, the, uh, and if we track different locations and we start to compare 10 branches on some of these different numbers, whether they be traditional f four to eight ones up here, these guys, or some of these service processy kind of things down here, uh, they're going to be people at the top and people at the bottom. Half of why they're at the top and half of why they're bottom is just pure dumb luck or bad luck, and half is skill. We have to sort of sort that out to really discern what what really are best insights, or uh, at the bottom, uh, sort of uh, unintentional uh, oversights. Uh, another form of feedback is when we look at how each person gets along with the rest of the people on the team, or from a hierarchical viewpoint, how all the followers sort of rate the leader. And I'm a big believer in doing 360 degree anonymous surveys. So people can say, okay, I'm going to rate my boss at a scale from one to 10 and, you know, a couple simple d dimensions and then feed that back to the branch managers again anonymously. And you may say, we have 10 branch managers. Here's the feedback and they're all lettered A through K or something. And you might say, well, you're in last place, but you're the only one at you and I are the only ones that know that you're in last place. And here's the feedback. And what are we going to do to close the gap or, or, or restructure how you do the job? Job so you can be effective. Um, now people, you know, get very sensitive about this. So it's important when we do these database scorecards, these job quality continuous improvement feedback. It's of course natural to rank people 
But how do we do it in an enlightened, cooperative, not a competitive, mean-spirited way? And let's take, we'll take a, a deeper look at, at sort of the, the how do we go about this to make sure everybody is getting a good uh, feedback benefit. So that's it for this slide. Thank you.